Okay, welcome everybody. Um, community governance call on Thursday, the 16th of February. Um, small group with a couple of updates. We are still waiting for um, the Firefly release, but we are making really nice progress on Firefly and the Alpha. And I wanted basically to show some small things that are a little bit important from Firefly. Maybe I just share my screen one second. Going, going live here. Okay, that should work. Do you see my screen, guys? Yep, see the wallet. Okay, yeah, you see all my <laughs> all my different wallets, and don't be afraid. Usually, I use dark mode, but I don't know. I forgot it here. Um, one thing that we had planned um, in regards to the proposal for the vote of the committee members was basically something like. Um, let me see. We have a proposal with a lot of questions here and a lot of answers. Where is it? No, it doesn't matter in the end. So usually, um, no. I need one with the tooltips. Would it be long proposal? Ah, here we have something. So actually, this is uh, maybe I change to dark mode because then there's really bad contrast here. Um, mm. Dark. Okay. I think that's better. No. Okay. Um, so, I, as you maybe know that um, we have several fields in this file that we create uploading to the nodes, which is basically the proposal um, and the proposal ID. And then we have this additional information fields. Yeah. So, this is basically the, the headline. This is what is coming from the event directly. This is the the text of the proposal, and then you have this um, additional info feed feeling, uh, field down here. Um, mm. In the releasable version, this will be a clickable link. Yeah, so basically, you will click on governance, blah blah blah, and you will come to the governance um, forum where you can read through all the all the proposals of the candidates. And if you haven't looked into it before, you can make your decision there. And then actually also what we had planned was that we have for every answer also an additional information. Um, and we actually planned that every answer would link to the individual um, submit submittal of, of every candidate. So basically this here would have if I if I open this tooltip here, there would there should be a link that brings me directly to Overclock's proposal or to Overclock's application. But this is not possible in the current version that we will release because this is also kind of an edge case. Usually you have yes and no and not much additional information. So basically you will have the additional information here which links to the forum post where all the candidates are listed and you can read through the candidates um, in the forum there, but you won't have the individual links on every single candidate um, again here. Yeah, this is something that's yeah, just it's it would be an extra extra nice nice feature thing, but. Um, I don't see well, this is a big issue actually because you have the link here and people that want to know what's going on, who are these persons, they will click the link, they will come to the governance forum where they find all the proposals and all the, the applications of all the candidates. 
And it's just the first iteration. I mean, maybe in the future they'll be able yeah. to add some in, bells and in, whistles to it. Yeah, in the end, actually, I, I also thought about it. We will not have... I mean, when would we have answers to a question where it is where the answer where every answer has a different URL link than the actual proposal that we are talking about. Yeah, so mm. it's a very edgy case that we hear with that we have here with the candidate selection. Usually you have a yes and a no. Yes, I support and no, I don't like this proposal. And all the proposal information you will have here in the general question with the link and you have the you could get linked to the forum and the things like this. So this would be something I mean, there could be things in the future like, OK, everyone has a different website or something like that. Um, which bridge provider do you prefer? Multi-chain, wormhole, whatever. Stuff like this could be possible. But I think it's like a rather edgy case and not the end of the world that we can do it here because people get all the information anyway from this link here, which will be clickable. You will see it will be have very likely will have like a, a blue color and you can click it and you can um, read through everything and then come back to the wallet and make your decision. Yeah. Oh, actually, do you see, JD? This is the bug that I had. Yeah. You mm -hmm. see it. You see it pu pulsating or something like this. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is a node issue. This is um, they're they're currently looking into some some stuff with the testnet nodes. So basically, I can't vote in the moment because uh, the node doesn't doesn't load the proposal correctly. But that's interesting. Uh, yeah. This is what why I was searching for. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's good. Yeah. That, it's good that you made like one that was going to be one that we're going to be using. It's just interesting to to see yeah. those little uh, yeah. nuances there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also they made this thing with the um, with the that you have this tooltip here. Yeah, it's nicer from the UI because you can basically also fit more more answers here. Um, because if you would make a a little text below this thing here, it would cluster everything. Yeah. So now it looks really right. nice. You have to clear things and you see, okay, there is more information back here and blah, 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 blah. Then you can read additional information up here, but it's nicer to keep the UI clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the thing. And the rest is, I think, um, all clear. Like I said, when we start voting or when people have updated their wallet um, to the new version. They will open it and they will go to the governance forum and they will directly see the proposals that are officially coming from the governance forum because they will be part, they will be already present in the node and people won't need to upload any custom proposals or stuff like this. Uh, but of course they can. Yeah? Um, but for the usual process of governance in Shimmer, it will always be present in the in the if nodes nice yeah yeah so that's actually the only thing let me see that yeah that was the only stuff that i wanted to show about uh, that's the only thing that's a little bit different but not really an issue okay what else um i also did already write governance guide for Firefly and um, we will implement all the all the um, governance features and everything into um, into the wiki yeah so maybe I'll change my screen sharing change window. So what I have done, I have ma basically made um, a step-by-step -step guide um, how to vote yeah, with screenshots and stuff like this. So basically click through, how does it work? What can you, can you do here? Where do you have to click? What do you have to do? How do you adjust your voting power and all this stuff? This is something we will have available then once the vote goes live. Probably, maybe also will. I'm thinking about doing this as an additional blog post, 
but likely we will just link to the page in, in the wiki where this is all and then basically everybody has a, has a guide how to use the new functions in Firefly and how to use vote uh, voting. And also because everything is moving into the wiki, um, the original GitHub repo that we had, so basically this one here, the IOTA community shimmer governance, uh, we will not use this anymore. Uh, we will integrate this directly into the wiki repo and then basically have all the governance documents, yeah, like the governance framework and the the stuff um, hosted in the in the wiki because it's the place where everything is going to be displayed and then it doesn't make sense to have two different repos. In the end, you will only have mess that uh, stuff is not updated from one to the other and then either the wiki is not having the actual stuff or the old one keeps, yeah. Does the uh, wiki have versioning? Absolutely. Wiki has oh, okay. everything. In wiki, you have, it, it works. Basically, it's much better organized than this um, GitHub repo because I'm, I mean, okay, I'm okay with GitHub, but um, uh, how the wiki works, those guys are much better. And so basically, you have mm -hmm. branch protection, you have versioning, you have a proper uh, you have proper PR and commit checks and um, and merging things. Not here because here I can just I just push everything that that I want to merge. I can just push it through. Mm -hmm. In Wiki I can't. You always need reviewers and stuff like this. And so it's actually right. um, a little bit professional, more professional organized. And it's That's cool good. because it's still. I mean, in the end, it's it's managed by by Doctor Electron and Jeron and. Um, yeah, I think two community people uh, that handle the wiki stuff. So it's it's cool. It's good. Yeah, but I don't want to have two repos where, because in the end, I know it things will not get updated from one to the other. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, what else? We had a little talk about um, how the treasury would handle. Um, let's say small running costs and stuff like this. Um, like uh, the treasury will have, will need to have a website. I mean, JD has already built something pretty cool for it. And these are, these are costs, yeah. Um, you will need a server for that. You will uh, have to pay for the domain. You will need some security stuff. You will, yeah, all these things. You will likely need some stuff for, um, for accounting and things like this, probably a software stuff, um, not stuff, but things uh, or programs or things like this. Um, we have not really implemented a budget for this into the treasury framework because I basically thought it's like, I mean, the most normal thing that as long as costs are properly represented and properly accounted for and properly reasoned, um, I think nobody will have an issue with uh, that the, the Treasury Committee has um, has some expenses that it needs to, to pay out of the budget of the Treasury. I just wanted to mention and hear if anybody has any obligation against uh, or thinks that this, this could be an issue um, or it could lead to, I don't know, to, to problems in the community if um, there will be, I don't know, a thousand dollar bill for server hosting and website stuff um, that is paid out of, uh, out of the treasury's budget. Basically, the question would be, does the treasury committee needs to write a grant proposal to itself to fund those things or can it just basically keep track keep book of all these things have of course pro proper bills um, of all the all the spending costs and does report all the spending costs um, and as long as this stuff is not getting out of range i i think nobody will have an issue with it of course if you have every month 50k for flight tickets to <laughs> and hotel costs and things like this yeah. 
that yeah meeting in the uh, yeah, Maldives yeah, you know, yeah meeting, meeting or or basically have oh we have to fly to Switzerland and then um, yes get a hotel in Switzerland whatever kind of stuff um, yeah this not but I think as long as it is just stuff that is needed for the daily operation of the committee um, nobody should have an issue but I just wanted to mention because we haven't really mentioned this as a potential cost in the framework um, so just that we find a proper solution how this is accounted for and kept track of yeah. and I put two links <clears throat> like the website um, you know it's all basically has a air tables on the back end and the first mm -hmm. link is essentially a, a transparent table simple web page in the website but the only thing i don't like about that is it's not really it's very limited like you can't show uh, sums you can't break it down by month week or year so what i did was i hyperlinked that if you click that table um, it goes right into the air tables and once you're in the air table you can really uh, sort it filter it you mm. can and i broke it down by grouped it by month and then basically weeks in there so someone can easily look and like even if you just look in january and you look in week 52 which is actually january 1st but mm -hmm. you know all of a sudden so if you click that table um you would see that it's oh it's twenty thousand five hundred. it just seems like a lot out of mm -hmm. the normal kind of standard twelve thousand. So you could key in and then go, well, what did they spend money mm -hmm. on? Okay, they spent they yeah. spent fifteen thousand money on this is all examples, of course. Yeah, yeah. On Mar for, for Marshall and stuff. Island. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, for Marshall. The... Yeah. Yeah. So and uh so I think but like you said, you know, I think for the for the standard administrative costs, um it's all transparent. So like you said, if someone puts some wacky charge, people are going to see that. So they, you're going to have to back it up. Yeah. Uh, and basically flights to have meetings in anywhere wouldn't come <laughs> under it. It would just be strictly <laughs> the website and um, maybe maybe bookkeeping. I don't think in the beginning, but like an accountant or something. But then I also think that, you know, the Treasury should. Uh, and I've, I've heard this in... Um, I think it was Algorand's, uh, I was listening to some of their governance ones, and they do um, transparency reports on a quarterly basis. I can't remember if it's monthly or quarterly. Yeah. And basically, it's just a financial statement going, showing cash flow and, you know, yeah. balance statement, which, you know, I think we'll as well keep and show and, yeah. and list somewhere. So, I mean, I, um, we have we have this planned anyway, the, yeah, the, the, to basically issue a statement of or to issue some report. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And if anybody wants to know more, uh, you you have it in, in there, have it probably in the air table. Um, can, you, can you attach the original files? So basically, if you have a bill or something, you can, uh, can you attach it yeah. in the air table also? Yes. And, and that's one. So th this, this is like a public view. Mm -hmm. um there's also a private view because all invoices are going to have personal information on yeah. it yeah. um so we could decide on you know we could black that out it's just going to take time for yeah or you know basically I would, I, yeah it's it takes time and i basically i wouldn't yeah, yeah i would completely leave but, it out but it can be shown on request yeah if really somebody comes in and says i can't believe that there is a consultant only charging hundred fifty five dollars an hour that's kind of can't be true i want to see the bill right then right um, yeah then right it can be done. and and you're right that will probably be the most scrutinized charges is if 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 the committee uses a bunch of consultants um and and i think that should be limited as much as possible yeah, yeah. but if Again, each one has a has a comment section in there. So if you scroll to the right, there's a comment. So it'd be said, you know, hey, we use this consultant mm -hmm. because two of the four reviewers had conflict of interest. So the yeah. program lead and a consultant was hired, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and that's another thing which I would hope to see that consultants 
are okay with, you know, publicly maybe putting their rates, like kind of having like a public mm -hmm. consultancy database at the community, which to me would be good marketing because then the community could reach out to them personally and say, hey, I'd like to use you too. But but yeah, I think as transparent as possible. I I, I do wonder how, yeah, and maybe like we could talk about how the community can say, hey, we need a community governance dashboard kind of like what you were talking about last week like how I, would that process go? Look, i don't think we ever really talked yeah. about that look i've i've just made open the makerdao one which i think is a really great one um yeah if if i i really think we we as a community as a project we will when we when you advance in governance we will need a proper governance dashboard mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so basically i would propose that we as a governance group not as a treasury but we here as people that meet every week and think about all kind of governance, um, we get together and we think about how such a thing should look and work like. Um, maybe collect some examples. There are really good ones out, out here from, like I said, MakerDAO is a great one. They have really a lot of stuff. They have all, have all their, their delegates there. They explain how voting works exactly. They have all the FAQs. They have all the expense reports, everything. And um, you can also directly vote and delegate your votes here. It all works together with um, smart contracts. And it also integrates, basically it pulls the information from the governance forum from the discourse. Because Maker has one uh, of the, Maker has one of the biggest, um, biggest uh, discourse servers basically this is all this is all directly coming from the forum um and uh, then the votes are coming from snapshot um or from i think they, are, they have their own voting tool but it's all integrated here in their dashboard and it's pretty pretty cool so basically i would think about that we all come together if we if we th when when we have time and think about hey, it would be cool to build something like this basically make a a basic design for it find a developer team that would be capable of and willing and happy to build something like this and then basically develop together with with this website builders or the devs um, a proposal to fund the development and producing such a su such a governance dashboard and basically um, submit this proposal to the treasury and hope that the treasury committee will see the value in it and evaluate it and uh, funds it and then basically the dev team can start building this whole thing this is i think would be the coolest way we could also of course start this as a discussion in the governance forum already say okay um, we basically have the idea that something like this would be cool what do others think yeah, and basically invite the community to start discussion in the governance forum, show some examples, make a nice little introduction proposal of what such governance can be used for, how they work, especially once we have EVM running, we have smart contracts, there's a lot of cool possibilities. Also, there is a lot of stuff that can be forked. Basically, you can fork this whole MakerDAO governance dashboard if you want, um, but it's very specific for MakerDAO, so it, it won't directly work with ours. Um, but yeah, that's that would be a nice project and um, could take some time. But then if you find a good team that is capable of building good websites and integrate um, all kind of apps and stuff like this into into such a, such a dashboard website, then you're ready to go. Uh, you need a nice designer. Yeah, and here they have the, the, all their resources. They have their governance forum. They have... Um, this is quite, they have a, a tracking sheet. They also have somewhere their expenses somewhere. Um, I think they have it in the forum or something. Um, yeah, so that's quite nice how they have done it. And other, other projects have similar things. So it's not something super specific, but um, in the end, I think if we get busy with governance, It'll, it'll make sense to have a, a central point where all the this information comes together. You see all the proposals that have been already 
voted on, you see all the results, um, who has voted, all the stuff. Yeah, so that's quite that's pretty cool. good. Yeah, that's quite nice. Do you do you see like it seems like in a lot of other governance ones that they will um, show kind of the wallets and yeah. how much voting power they're using. I mean, do you yeah. see us in in Shimmer slash Iota like doing a querying kind of dashboard that shows, hey, these are the wallets. You know, people could say these are yes. these are how the whales voted. You know, yes, um, I think I think yes. In it, it will come anyway. I mean. We had already. We are all had. We always had the rich list thing. So all, everybody was kind of sneaking. Of, and I mean the rich list was useless because there was no votes going on. But now you right. you 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 will have this stuff, and um, you will have things like this. And people will ask, okay, especially once we would have potential um, delegation, um, mm. because then you. Um, you basically would have people that potentially concentrate a lot of voting power on them. And then it's it's good to have a very transparent overview of all these things that shows you, okay, this delegate has 10% of all votes under their belt. So they are quite strong. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will if we don't, it will automatically, somebody will, will come together and start collecting um, a list and potentially will make a, an ugly looking Excel sheet or something like this, where where all this stuff tr will be tried to be tracked. Then in the end, I think it's nicer to do it publicly, built from the community, for the community, um, and have such a thing where everything is directly transparent uh, and you don't need... Yeah. Yeah, I think cool. you, here they have this. Yeah, they have. Um, uh, this is quite cool in in MakerDAO because a MakerDAO has something. MakerDAO has, I think, twenty five paid delegates. These are public ones. They basically these guys they put their names up there. They are doxed, pub, or mostly doxed, or it's it's organizations like here. This is uh, GFX Labs. They have a couple of U U.S. universities there, like um, here Penn State. They have a own blockchain section um, that are big delegates in in many many different DAOs, um, and they have what they call shadow delegates. Shadow delegates are just wallet addresses, but they not publicly announce who they are or what they do. But they keep track of all this, and you see basically how much power those guys have. Um, how often, how much they participate, um, how they communicate. Um, quite nice, yeah. But this is, of course, specific nice. for delegates. But um, you could also do this for individual wallet, ad for the, I don't know, biggest 50 wallet addresses and things like this. Yeah. But of course, yeah, this is this has grown. I mean, MakerDAO has, is, is live since... Yeah. Since years, I remember this has looking grown at it. over the years. Yeah, I remember looking at it two years ago, and it's come a long way yeah. since then. And I, I'm in contact with really the, good. I'm in contact with the guy that builds. Or basically, he's the he's the the lead of the MakerDAO's own uh, tool building thing. So they have a, a group of software engineers that are basically it's a it's an own company um, run by MakerDAO that build all these things. So if we would like to get some insights, um, we could set up a call with them or something like this and and get some inspiration or some help. Or if basically we would have a dev team, I can, could get them in contact with them. Um, they will, they're usually good guys and they're always happy to help other communities building cool stuff. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear how much the annual running cost on something like this would be. I have to have it, wait. Um, where is it? Is it in the forum? I just saw it here. Um, I 
they have it. They have an, uh, a public expense tracker, of course, where where all those costs are. Mm, Oh, I do have something to to inquire about once you're mm -hmm. done with this. I, I'd be interested. That's not that some some DAOs uh, really only I've see found on the. Um, oh, they're losing losing my mind here. But one of them was very mm -hmm. easy to find, kind of like the transparent, ex, you know, basically just even the accounting of of how much is even left in the DAO, and then yep. other DAOs, it's like impossible to find any yeah. expense spending, yeah. which I personally just don't like, you know, like you don't mm -hmm. even know how much is, is left in the treasury Dow to fund, but, but I definitely support a transparent, um, system for at least the community treasury. Yeah. Absolutely. They have something here They have a, this is a, but this is a tracking sheet. This is just a Google sheet basically where where they keep track of all the things that are happening, all the proposals and all the things. But they have, I saw it somewhere, but I don't find it now. They have a nice expense report sheet where they, um, yeah, basically where they show all the stuff, how much they spend. Mm -hmm. And they have, I mean, it's a huge DAO, uh, but they also have some problems with expenses, especially in the bear market they had, um, they had some struggles, of course, but it's it's not just. I mean, it's a whole protocol what they're running. Yeah, it's a huge, huge, huge DeFi protocol, and so basically um, everything has to be paid out of what the protocol um, creates on revenue. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a bit different from from our thing. Yeah, yeah that's that's. I think that's just going to be the something to consider. I mean, yeah. You know, unfortunately, the treasury is not going to make any money. So if we, let's say, we're to to host annual um, funding of different dashboards and stuff, we have to be careful that, you know, we're not just simply burning out the treasury funds, which will finish in a couple of years yeah. <clears throat> yeah. on just maintenance of stuff, which then ah. all of a sudden you wouldn't be able to maintenance any of that. Here is it. Expenses dash dashboard... Um, bum, 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 bum. Expenses dashboard is there here? There's a link. There they have their expenses with. Yeah, so this is their core units, how much they spend. I think this is monthly in DAI. So I always have to, mm. to know the exchange rate of stuff. Um, yeah, so you see how much active busted uh, budget they use, forecasts for the expenses. Um, and I think they break it down then into core units where you basically see um, how, much, how much team members, how much expenses they have. So basically, this is really, really well done. Oh, wow. um, Can you put that link in the yeah. message? Yeah. Please? Yeah. Like I said, it's a, I mean, MakerDAO is, is just like prime what they do. Mm. Um, and like, I think they, they employ, I talked with the guy maybe two, three months ago, they employ 160 people at Make Adult. So it's really huge, the protocol. Yeah. So 160 people is, um, and this includes, most of them are pure devs for keeping up the smart contracts, auditing their own work and security. So it's like a real, a real fat business, what they're doing. Um, yeah, and they're building all their tools themselves also. Yeah. Like, they they have I think they even haven't haven't forked snapshot or stuff like this. They built all the voting things, all the dashboards, all the analytics. They built themselves, um, and right. they keep track of all their expenses like this. And they do this since since many years, so that's pretty nice. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Um. Just curious. Um. 
as there's been a little movement on uh, stable tokens in the mm. U.S. I don't know if that's anything going on anywhere else, but um, <laughs> like like the 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 Binance mm. USD, they just um, you know I'm kind of trying to get as much information I had, but it might be a a question for uh, Paulo to start looking into the our you know legal. Um, because if all of a sudden it's considered a security, I wonder if funding a grant in a stable coin, if the proposal receiver is in the U.S., if that could cause any issue. Mm. Um, yeah. If they, really, what I... if they really ban stable coins in the U.S., then we have much much diff much more do much more issues than paying out grants this will be very very sure. bad yeah uh, okay. what i was yeah. what i was reading i thought i finally found one article that was more like you know they're not they're not going after stable coins it was this particular they're going up uh, after custodians again yeah custodial services kinda. that's the yeah yeah, it was just kind of how they listed the stable coin. Like they didn't do the proper procedure. I don't know, Ben. Did you read anything about that? Was it um, Paxos? Was it Paxos? Yeah, it's Paxos that is is issuing the Binance coin. Basically, actually, yeah. they they thought. I think that I mean Paxos was very vocal around the time where FTX collapsed. That they basically are the most regulated because they follow all the New York regulations. And I mean, they have their mm -hmm. license, they have their full issuing license from the New York, however it is called. Um, and, and this is the hardest regulation, right. crypto wise, that you can right. have in the world. And they basically have been sure and ensured by New York that whatever they do is correct. And now Gary mm -hmm. is. Gary is taking the piss let's say like this and um, thinks he can enforce some some stuff there um, the good thing is they also tried it with circle now and and circle is there is a thing called in the US security regulations I think they call it they get you get a you get basically you get a piece you get a notification it is called I think a wells a Wells letter or something like this from the SEC that says, okay, okay we are investigating you. And uh, during this investigation, you, um, you, you have to stop issuing this thing until we basically tell you if you're, a sec if you're breaking the law or not. And I think mm -hmm. Circle did something. There is, it's called a reverse Wells letter. And Circle issued this against the SEC on a court, basically says that, okay, we feel uh, we have a we have a we have a valid license and we feel that uh, SEC is kind of doing something against the law or against the regulations and so basically with this letter they now SEC has to prove first that a uh, circle is doing something illegal and they cannot proceed their investigation until they have proved this no, it's nice. like I mean, this is all U.S. regulation stuff, and you yeah. know, they yeah, are yeah. crazy there. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, uh, I wouldn't assume that it's some horrible thing that's going to happen soon or anything. No. I think it's it's we're seeing chatter from other conflicts that are going on involving stable coins, and you know how things will actually break out. It won't be like in next week all stable coins are illegal or anything like that. No. And again, sort of only just in walk. only just in USA. That's like, yeah, it always yeah. sounds like. But we actually, it could be good for Europe, um, even if Europe is is doing their own crazy stuff. But um, if all the stuff moves has to move out of UK, out of US, where are they going? They're going to go to the UK and to Europe and potentially Southeast Asia somewhere. But um, the money is going to flow somewhere else, and the US will have, yeah. A very, very secure, but very quiet economy. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, be interesting to see. Absolutely. Meanwhile, we keep building. Yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, so I hope um, potentially we get a beta for Firefly, a public beta very, 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 very soon, maybe before the weekend. 
this means we will have a lot of people testing the voting. Um, this is also why I made this guide because I told Nicole, yeah, if you release the beta, just drop the guide with it that everybody basically knows what they should do or what they are looking at. Um, if we get along with the beta, maybe until next weekend, would be very cool to proceed for a final voting phase. Yeah, but again, nothing promised. We still have some little, little, little mini fixes to do. But I think until now, it looks like all the bugs are found and in the fixing. So as long as nobody else found some find something super, super strange. Uh, I think we are nearing goal. Q. Until then, um, if there is no one else having any topics around governance to discuss, let's wrap it up. Um, meet again here next Thursday. And um, yeah, wish you all a good weekend. Happy, uh, happy day, happy morning, happy evening, wherever you are. And um, yeah, see you again next week. Thank you. See you, you next week. Bye. Bye.